Hello, this is Hakka the Bean, and I am here with the next part of the end of death, which is just a question. Do you remember funerals? If you like the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't like the video, then that's on you. Anyway, let's get into this. A hundred or so years ago, Dr. Emily Young sat in her office in the back of Site 2718 and quietly deleted files while the world screamed outside. <sighs> it's only fitting that the last one to leave would be the first to return. No one had entered Earth's Site 2718 in almost a century. A thin layer of dust coated everything from loose papers to the 21st century antiques that used to call computers. Everything was, support, was supposed to be erased, burnt, or deleted to cover up what happened. But the lab cleared out in, in a panic. Well, except for Dr. Young. Hey, you still there? Emily shook her head and moved into the main lab area. Yeah, sorry Joyce, it's just been a while. Lots of memories. Well, well you can t take a trip if down memory lane later, Eric replied. You and I have a... Lights in about two hours. Just please show us where Tony is. Emily nodded and walked toward the door in the back. A red bulb flashed nearby that lit up a sign reading SCP-3448 testing in progress. Another part of the cleanup that Emily neglected. Although in all fairness, the machine was still on. The dedicated generator still hummed. Emily opened the door to the testing room to let Trois and Eric inside, except they refused to move. They both stood there, staring at the remains of Tony Michaels, still lying in the middle of the main cavity. She walked over to the residual signal imaging console, which was just a PC monitor hardwired into the massive hulk of a machine that was SCP-3448. Blowing on the keyboard created a small cloud of dust, which wafted into the fluorescent light. It took a few moments before Emily felt comfortable sitting in her old swivel chair again. So, he's dead? Eric finally asked. Not quite. Technically, he's only half dead. Give me a moment to boot this thing up. It should still work, Emily replied. In the meantime, Joyce edged closer and closer to her brother's corpse. She smelled of rotten flesh, even though there was only bones and a faded foundation uniform left. Joyce began to regret even coming down here. She might have tainted her last memory of Tony. Okay, okay, I got it working. Joyce, get over here and say hello to your brother. Emily called from in front of the console. Joyce walked over and looked at the monitor. <sighs> You have something and you want me to say to him? Eric looked at Joyce. You should dictate. Be aware what the words in me anyways. I'm having something simple. Just, uh, hey Tony, it's Joyce and Eric. And before you ask, dad's doing fine. Emily typed something into the apparatus. And then they waited. A few minutes passed and then a few more. And then the screen flickered to life. That's, that's Tony, Eric had, had to say out loud. But for it to register for him, no one really knew what to do. It's like being reacquainted, reacquainted with an old friend. But there's a one-way mirror between you. Well, um, I mean, we really need to go. Our flight's in an hour. I don't know if we're going to make it, Eric said as he moved toward the door. Oh, you go ahead. Joyce and I are staying here. Come again? We're going to get a Tony back. Joyce replied. Eric looked at her for a moment, then over at Emily, he nodded. Tony is awake, okay? You'll be the first to know. Take care of Dad for me. You got it, sis. And with that, Eric turned to leave the building. Joyce and Emily stood in silence for a few moments, just letting the atmosphere and the plan moving forward sink in. Alright, Let, let's get this place up and running. You want to show me how to how to work this thing? I'll do it at the end. Even though the monitor is always giving us a real-time view of any interpreted images, 
We only make reports at midnight. All right, then. Let's see if I still remember how <clears throat> neuroscience works. <sighs> we flipped the switch to turn on the remaining fluorescent lights. Oh, it's nice to be back in a lab. SCP-3448. Day 40,053 imaging results. 7.30 to 7.45. A man speaks to a large teddy bear in a mirror. 10.45 to 11.28. A man walks through a garden overrun with daisies. 12.38 to 13.43. The same man is searching through the daisies for some object. 16.53 to, to 17 o'clock. The man is kneeling in the daisies, smiling at the, de at the ground. After six minutes, he looks up and speaks. The exact words spoken could not be deduced from the lip movements due to the angle of the shot. The man begins to laugh softly. 17 o'clock to 17.50 in static. 18.50 to 19.45. Rain falls from a cloudless sky. Half a rainbow can be seen. Joyce and Emily slept in the lab, since it was easier than getting a hotel or apartment. Joyce scavenged for any leftover reports or unburnt research papers. A desk drawer here, a USB there. And that could give a clue about bringing her brother back. Emily, on the other hand, returns to the monitor room. When you haven't seen someone for a hundred years, there's a lot to catch up on. It's hard to talk, talk to the machine. All I really could do is try to etch messages directly into Tony's unconscious. And all Tony could do was... Well, they never really figured out exactly how Tony could control the residual signals, or if he could control them at all. At least I have the conversation the only way she knew how. <clears throat> how have you been? 931 to 931. A man sits in a room with dark like wall with dirt walls next to a counter made of tile. In the back of the room a large teddy bear is propped up against the wall. The man shrugs and then motion towards the screen. <sighs> That's pretty straightforward for being in the Garden of the Dead for a hundred years. I've been doing fine myself. Was kind of rough at first, shot myself in the head, but it's all good now. 932 to 933. The man from, from the previous image laughs, then calls out to the teddy bear behind him. The teddy bear does not respond. <sighs> You laugh, but the doctors had to do a real number on me. Anyways, I know you have limited feedback in there. You just want to write down what you what uh, you've missed. Nine thirty-three to nine thirty-three. The man nods and grabs something off the counter and leaves the room. <sighs> hey Emily, I'm going to head out and get food for the fridge. How long do you think we'll be here? Joyce called from the next room um, over. You don't have research is. I don't have a clue. So am I buying sleeping pads or are we renting a room? If you're renting a room, you're renting solo. Sleeping pad it is. And then Joyce left the warehouse, but she didn't really need to get the food or the sleeping pad. At least not right then. She just didn't want to be right at a cross from the room from her brother. It felt like when her her dad was about to die, but in reverse. It felt too surreal, too uncanny, too impossible. Strange, all this time, working into foundation and something still got to her. She's been working for 400 years. Does anyone ever get used to the foundation? Joyce drove down to the grocery store and dropped food into a cart absentmindedly. Those headphones kept her in a personalized little, little thought level, where she thought she about what she'd say to Tony. Joyce had to say something. I wonder if he'd still recognize me. It's been so long and people do change. Joyce felt well, sort of like her headphones. They were her headphones, the same ones she'd been wearing for the past century, but after all the repairs, upgrades, and component swaps, I didn't have any of the same parts I had when she first bought them. But it was still the same pair of headphones, right? They were the ones she carried around everywhere, never threw them out or bought another pair, really. 
It's still the same choice, right? She didn't even enter the monitor room when she got back to the warehouse. <laughs> SCP-3448, day 40,054, imaging results. 931 to 931, a man sits in a room with dirt right next to a counter made of towel. In the back of the room, a large teddy bear is propped up against the wall. The man shrugs and then motion towards the screen. 932 to 933, the man from previous image laughs and then calls out to the teddy bear behind him. The teddy bear does not respond. 9.33 to 9.33. The man nods and then grabs something off the counter and leaves the room. 9.53 to 10.54. The man waters through the field of flowers. A red handle protrudes from his pocket. Occasionally he squats and examines a daisy. Periodically he nods his head. 10.54 to 14.33. Brown tinted static. 15.53 to 15.55. A skeleton spinning rapidly in an empty void. 1605 to 1612. The man jumps away from a daisy, then starts to shout, "The war is soon to be for Fandies." A red handle is seen protruding from the dirt. 1912 to 1930. A large teddy bear walks among the daisies. At 1929, it stops and leads down to pick something up. Hmm. <sighs> it had been nine days since Joyce arrived, and four days since they called an Emily to head of some project. Joyce hadn't heard a word from her since, but that's only to be expected. She was curious what could be so important that they would call Emily of all people. Joyce had spent the time writing out her thoughts, looking over old imaging reports, and to keep her out of the monitor room. The door was open just enough for the light of the screens and LEDs to shine through, which kept Joyce up at night. She considered closing it a few times, but decided against it for reasons she couldn't articulate. She split her time evenly between scouring the SCP that had a base for anything that could help bring you only back, and writing out what she it would say to him when she finally it walked in that room again. She'd gone through a lot of paper trying to get her thoughts in order. She was almost certainly overthinking this, but then again, who wouldn't be? It was quiet without Emily around, which just wonders for the mind. Let's you hear yourself think, which is both a curse and a blessing at the same time. Joyce tried to drown out her own thoughts with her headphones, but after a few moments, the music would fade into white noise and her thoughts would keep bouncing around her head again. At po that point, she'd crumple up whatever page she'd been working on and move back to the monitor to see if the paper titled Residual in Imaging Interpretation, Metaphors of the Mind, had anything useful. It went on about how, confronted with entirely foreign stimuli, the mind will attempt to shape them into something it could understand. Normally something terrifying. <clears throat> what are you scared of in the first place? It was a good question. Joyce knew the answer, but it's good to ask. Why don't you just introduce yourself to him again? Doesn't matter who he remembers. You're you now. What he remembers from a hundred years ago oh, means jack crap for tomorrow. It was a good point. Too good a point. Joyce put her headphones on and went back to looking through the database. Don't try to ignore yourself. You know you're right. She opened up another file. Coward. You're just going to ignore him? You already spoke it to him once. It won't be much different. That's what, and she was on autopilot. She was still in shock. Bullcrap. She was scrolling through the file but not reading the words. A hundred years might change your personality, your body, your mind, but it won't change the fact that he's your brother. Talk to him. He freaking misses you. <sighs> she sighed. She was right. She hates being right. She put on, on when the sun sets and walked into the monitor room. SCP-3448. Day 40,062 imaging results. 1035 to 1145. A man strolls through with a garden, looking intensely at a gardening hoe, with a red handle. 1245 to, one, uh, uh, to 1303. Sorry, I forgot. We're doing 24-hour clock here. A garden hoe with a red handle laying on top of a small pile of bones. After 12 minutes, a man appears in a frame, appearing to look for something. After 16 minutes, he finds the gardening hoe and begins to 
or the bones in the dirt. 1413 to 1416, the man nods while he continues to dig. 1416 to 1418, a warm red color. 1418 to 1420, the man smiles. 1420 to 1421, the shape of a heart. 1721 to 1751, the man walks away from where he finished burying the bones. 1911 to 2111, a young woman asleep in a bed. 2. <sighs> Joyce almost didn't notice when Emily came back, since it was so quiet. She didn't talk about what she worked on. She walked into the monitor room and tried to communicate with Tony for hours. She wouldn't talk about what Tony had said to her either. When night came, Joyce could hear Emily slowly bang her head against the pillow. At one point, she heard a grunt followed by a thud, followed by a eye of pain. Joyce rushed over to see what happened. Emily held her head in her hands, covered up a new bruise. The pillow was far away. Joyce sat next to Emily. Do you feel dizzy? No. Is your vision and blurry? No, Joyce. Do you feel like throwing up? No, I'm fine. Are you sure? I said I'm fine. Emily continued to apply pressure to the side of her head. I'll give you some ice. Thanks. Joyce went to the top section of the refrigerator that they had bought, which doubled as a freezer. She grabbed some ice cubes from a tray and then popped one of the big clothes to pull out of the robes they used to have subjects wear during testing. She tore off a strip of fabric and wrapped it around Emily's head, keeping the ice cubes over the bruise. They sat in silence after Joyce finished. I missed my chance, Emily said. Your chance? I had three freaking weeks. And I didn't do it. Do what? Frickin' gosh darn idiot! Frick! Frick! Emily, calm down! It was a knife, Joyce. Just a knife that actually worked. A thing that could kill you. Oh, I know this SCP. We just went over it not too long ago. Emily was crying now. Wait, that's impossible. I spent three weeks being a good Samaritan. They told, told me they thought I changed. They were wrong, but I still didn't do it. Emily, slow down. I just... I should have done it before they took it away. Just right through the heart. It's okay. It's all going to be okay. No, it's not. And now I'm going to keep waking up. Day after day after day. And I want to die. Don't you get? I want to die. Just kill me already. Freaking kill me, Joyce. Kill me. Kill already, you freaker. Do it. Ooh, think freaker like that. It kind of sounds bad. Anyway. Joyce hugged Emily it tightly. She was scared. They were both scared and tired. I want, I want to die. I want to do it. I didn't do it. Why didn't I do it, Joyce? I don't know. I don't know. I want to die. I don't want you to die. Emily paused. That makes one of us. SCP-3448 Day 40,079. Imaging results. 420 to 520. A man is inside a room with dirt walls, sitting next to a person sized teddy bear. He is staring blankly at the opposite wall. 613 to 615. A tree branch where all the, all the leaves are replaced with hands. The hands appear to be clenched as fists and are attempting to punch the branch. A number of them have bloody knuckles. 730 to 745. The man examines a garden hoe. After 14 minutes, he throws it at the dirt wall. 8.15 to 13.45. Static. 14 o'clock to 14.30. The man paces back and forth in the room, occasionally picking up the garden hoe and dressing with it. 19 o'clock to 20.14. The man is sitting with his head in his hands. The teddy bear has fallen on its side. 
2357 to 2359, a young woman lying awake in bed. <sighs> Somewhere in Calgary, a man named Jared Ed Helberg received a call from an unknown caller. Very few people knew how to get to his work phone, and the Foundation for All Call Mandates mandates that all secure lines utilize a false caller ID or additional security. Jared slowly picked up the phone. Hello? Is this Dr. H Elberg? said a female voice. It is. I need your help. I've been going through these old logs and lab notes and your name kept showing up. Excuse me, who are you? You wouldn't know me. Then what are... But I'm with your old boss, Dr. Young. Dread paused. It had been a long time since he heard that name. Now he kn knew why the number didn't have a caller ID. What are you doing? Actually, no, I... Can I just talk to Emily? Wait, didn't she shoot herself in the head? Or maybe that was someone else. God, that was so long ago. Hard to keep track of who did what back then. She's lying on the ground, just murmuring her to herself. I'm trying to, trying to figure out how to bring Tony back. I don't know how this damn machine works. The only qualified person asked me to kill her last night. I need help. Jared put down the phone. He didn't hang up. He's needing a moment to think. It was like thinking was going to change his, his decision. He needed to convince himself it was the right decision. After a few minutes, he picked up the phone on again. My flight leaves tomorrow. I hope you have somewhere for me to sleep. That was, uh, I think, part two of season two of The End of Death. Do you remember funerals? As you might have guessed, this was very hard to read, and it took a long time. It appears they are working on trying to grant people something that they have been denied for over a century. That thing being death. If you enjoyed this, this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you did not enjoy this video, then you just wasted about half an hour of your time. Well, a bit less than that, but still. I'll see you in the next one, when I, I go over whatever I feel like. Goodbye, I'll see you tomorrow.